Namaste. Hello. Welcome to Third Age Yoga. I'm Andy Gillitz, and I'll be your teacher today. Yoga is an ageless wellness practice that can be done by almost anyone, no matter your age, no matter your physical challenges. If you have done yoga in the past, maybe years ago, or if you have never done yoga before, Third Age Yoga is an opportunity to safely try yoga out and see how it feels. My job as your teacher is to keep you safe, to help you feel comfortable as we do the movements and poses of yoga, and to help you enjoy all the many benefits of yoga, including better, better posture, better balance, greater flexibility, greater strength, these things are so important to keeping us independent and mobile as we grow older. Yoga also helps relieve stress and anxiety and helps us fully relax. So yoga can help us feel our best each day, no matter what kind of medical condition we might be living with. Yoga is Third Age Yoga is a journey through your comfort zone, so it should never hurt. You should never feel discomfort. But what I hope you will feel are some healthy stretches and strengthening movements that you know you can tell when you're doing them. They feel like they're good for you, but they feel good when you do them at the same time. Okay, yoga is meant to be done barefoot. So if you are able, I'm going to invite you now to take your shoes and socks off before we begin. Let's get our feet into the act here. Um, what do you need? Well, I'm going to ask you to get a chair without arms. So just a folding chair, a kitchen chair, a dining room chair, and a sticky yoga mat. So why do we want a sticky yoga mat? so that our feet and hands stick to it and we feel stable and grounded on the mat. Yoga mats are available around town for about $10. If you don't have a mat or can't get a mat, please don't let that stop you. Just go ahead and for, for all of our standing poses and movements, stand on your carpet, your floor, wherever you are right now, and for everything else, just take a seat in your chair. The benefits are the same. Let us begin, and where do we start? By finding our tallest, healthiest posture. So I am going to invite you to bring your feet about hip width apart. What do I mean by that? We've got some big old hip bones right in here. Maybe you can feel them, maybe you can't. It does not matter. But if I took my hands and made a line down my legs, it would hit about the middle of my feet. So that's about hip width apart. When you're too wide, you're really not comfortable in a standing position. If you're too close, oh my goodness, I don't even know what to do with my knees here. So this is just about right. See how it feels. Outsides are parallel, so your toes should not be turned out and not, not a bow-legged kind of thing, but just straight ahead and we are going to stack our knees on top of our ankles. So not like this, but like this. And now I'm going to invite you to see what it feels like to put your whole foot in contact with the ground. So let's come to the outsides of our feet like so. That feels good, doesn't it? And gently bring the insides of our feet to the ground. Here's something fun. Let's lift our toes off the ground and then one by one bring them down to the ground. And can you feel your whole foot on the ground? Let's grow long through our thighs and bringing the top, very top of your thighs just slightly back. You notice that gives you a little lift in the bottom of your belly makes you a little taller, brings your spine into a good alignment. Getting long through your side body, 
lifting your chest and bringing the top of your breastbone back just a little bit. This is our breastbone. So bringing, it's kind of a rectangle. Bring the very top of it back a little bit as you bring the bottoms of your shoulder blades in toward the front of your body. It's a very gentle movement. Let me show you from the side so you can see. Just like so. And guess what happens when you do that small movement? Your shoulders come back, they stack over your hips, your chest opens up, you can breathe. When your shoulders are forward and you're slumped like this, guess what? Your chest is compressed and your lungs can't get as much air. But when you have a tall, healthy mountain posture, you can breathe better. Let's stack our ears over our shoulders and look straight out at the world. Life is so much more interesting when you're looking out at the world. Nothing is happening down there. So looking out. Starting with our tallest, healthiest posture, let's go ahead and stretch out our joints in our neck a little bit, okay? So go ahead, take a look over your right shoulder and back to center. Take a look over your left shoulder, back to center, looking over your right shoulder, back to center. It does not matter how far you go. Just a little bit of movement. It should feel very nice on your neck. And back to center. Let's go ahead and bring our right ear a little closer to our right shoulder and feel a nice stretch on the left side of your neck. And back to center, bringing your left ear a little closer to your left shoulder. Back to center. One more time. Bring your right ear closer to your right shoulder, back to center, left ear, closer to your left shoulder, and back to center. Let us make some circles with our arms. So let's bring our arms forward, up, out, back and down. And one more time, forward, up, out, back and down, and forward, up, out, back, and down, and relax. Let's go the other way. Let's bring our arms back, out, up, forward, and down, and back, out, up, forward, and down. One more time. Back, out, up, forward, and down. Let's bring our arms overhead touching your palms together, and now bringing your arms straight out at shoulder level, palms facing forward. Let's give ourselves a hug with our right arm on top. Feel a nice stretch in your back. And open wide. Give yourself a hug with your left arm on top. And opening wide. One more hug, right arm on top. You're worth it. Opening your arms wide. And finally, one more hug with your left arm on top. You deserve it. And arms wide. Let's bring our palms up. Touch them together. Down through center. This is our namaste. Moving right along. Go ahead, putting your hands on your waist. And we're going to do what I call hula hoops. So just beginning to rotate your hips. It feels good. Just getting things loose. Few times one way, a few times the other. And now let's go ahead and take a seat. So whether you are using a mat, a chair, let us all come to sit in the chair. And we're going to do something that is a very classic part of yoga. And it is called a cat-cow spinal flow. And what that means is it's meant to open all of the joints in the bones that run from our neck all the way down to our tailbone. These 
26 bones are called our vertebrae, and they, ha they all have joints. And all the joints in our bodies need to be lubricated with the fluids inside our bodies to stay healthy and to keep us moving. And the purpose of the yoga cat-cow flow is to get our joints lubricated. It's fun and easy. So first our cat. So as I breathe in, I'm going to bring my belly forward, lift my chest and look up. As I breathe out, I'm going to arch my back and take a look at my belly button. That's my angry cat. I'm going to inhale, bringing my belly forward, lifting my chest, looking up, cow. Breathing out, angry cat, arching my back, looking at my belly button. Let me show you from the side so you can see what it looks like. Inhaling, cow, belly forward, lifting chest. Exhaling, angry cat, arching my back. That is our cat-cow flow. Let us do it together. Inhale, cow. Exhale, angry cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, angry cat. One last time. Take a nice breath in. Inhale, cow. Exhale, breathe out, angry cat and relax. Let's stand up. Today we're going to do some forward bending. Forward bending in yoga is very important because it carries many benefits and two of them are that if you forward bend with one leg in front of the other, and we will be doing that, you get a twofer. So you are stretching the backs of your legs in here and also stretching the front of your body where your legs meet your body. This is called our psoas and it's a muscle that needs to be stretched because we sit a lot, don't we? And it's, this muscle is always being folded and creased. But in our forward bending today, you'll see that we'll get to stretch these. So we're going to do a little flow and we're going to start with our Yoga Warrior One. There are three warrior poses in yoga, and these are the very strong, bold poses. And they are called, guess what? Warrior One, Warrior Two, and Warrior Three. Today we will start with Warrior One, and we're going to flow that into a one-sided stretch, and then we're going to repeat our Warrior One. So let us begin. And of course, let's start in our tall, healthy mountain posture. I'm going to invite you to put your hands on your waist, feel nice and stable. And I hope that you are standing the long way on your mat, like so. But I want to be able to look at you, so I'm going to stand this way. So let us begin by bringing your left foot back. And notice that my left foot is out at a little bit of an angle. So I don't need to go too far back. You decide. If you feel like you're going to top over, come a little closer. It's not how far you go. It's how you feel. So here we are. Notice I'm nice and upright, looking straight ahead at you. Bending your right knee, stacking it over your right ankle. We're finding our Yoga Warrior One. As you feel stable and ready, Let's go ahead, bring our arms overhead. Yoga warrior one, and breathe. Relax your arms back to your side, straighten your right knee. Let's go ahead. We're going to fold from our right hip crease with our hands on our waist, and just take a little bow right out over your right leg, just a little bit. Feeling the stretch in the back of your right leg. I know you do. Take a breath and rise. Let's go ahead. Bend our right knee again. Stack it over our right ankle. Let us find our Yoga Warrior One again. 
feeling stable. As you're ready, let's bring our arms overhead. Nice and strong. Take a breath and try to relax. And return your hands to your waist and step your left foot forward. You notice that when we put our left foot back, what were we stretching? Our psoas. Let us do the other side. Let's this time bring our right foot back. One of the nice things about doing things first on one side, then on the other is we get to experience the difference between the two sides of our bodies. And we may think we're more or less the same, but some things are easier on one side and more difficult on the other and vice versa. So it's wonderful because yoga helps us become more sensitive to our bodies and that keeps us safer and healthier. So notice that my right foot is out at a little bit of an angle, not too much, but just a little bit so that I can face forward. Let's go ahead, bending your left knee, stacking it over your left ankle. Notice I'm real upright, I'm not bowing, nice and tall. That's the warrior in us. As you're ready, bringing your arms overhead. Yoga warrior one. Take a breath. Relax your arms. Straighten your right knee. We're going to fold like an envelope forward from our right, our left hip crease, I'm sorry. Take a bow right over your left leg. You do not have to go very far. I know you're feeling a stretch in the back of your left leg, so you want to feel a nice stretch, but not any pain. Relax, take a breath, and rise. Let's go ahead, bending our left knee again, stacking it over our left ankle. We're going to find our warrior one again. As you're ready, bringing your arms overhead, Nice and wide, no scrunching. Nice and wide. Finding stability and comfort, taking a breath. Relaxing your arms, straightening your left knee, stepping your right foot forward. That is our forward bending flow. Let us find a seat. So if you are using your chair, I want to invite you to take a seat. If you are coming to the mat, I'm going to show you a safe, comfortable way to come down to the mat from a standing position. Let me caution you. It is harder to get up from the ground than it is to get down to the ground. So if you have any hesitation about whether you can get up again once you're down, I'm going to invite you to use the chair. Keep yourself safe. For those that are coming to the mat, here's a safe way to come down and up. I'm going to stand about a foot in front of my chair, my tall mountain posture, my feet are about hip width apart, and now I'm going to fold from my hip creases, bending my knees, and finding the seat of my chair, just like this. And I'm going to use my chair as my support. I'm going to bring my right toes back, right knee down to the ground, left knee comes down beside it. Now I can find my hands and knees. And I want you to stay where you are and I'm just going to rotate so that you can see me. Walking your knees to the right, and I know that makes you a little off center, and bringing coming to rest on the outside of your left thigh. And now, just go ahead, gently swing your legs around, like so. We are going to do, whether you are seated in your chair or on the mat, what, they, what is called a bent knee forward bend. Bending the knee makes it easier to bend forward, so that's why we do it, that's a good reason. So I'm going to invite you to bend your left knee. If you are seated in your chair, I want you to take a look at what we're doing on the floor. 
and I will come up to the chair in a moment and show you how to do this pose while seated in your chair. So bending your left knee and bringing the sole of your left foot a little closer anywhere along your right foot. It doesn't need to touch, just anywhere close. And now I'm going to invite you to stack your hands one on top of the other. And just like we did when we stood up, folding forward from your right hip crease, just like this. And I'm going to rise again and take a look. Notice that I'm not going very far. It's quite a stretch on the back of your right leg, and I'm sure you're feeling it. So be kind to yourself. Don't go very far. Don't do this. Open and lift your chest. It's worth it to be a little more upright and be able to breathe. And coming back, straightening the left leg. Let's bend our right knee and go ahead and place the sole of your foot somewhere along the inside of your left leg. Nice and straight. Stacking your palms one on top of the other. And go ahead and just folding like an envelope from your left hip crease, like so. Such a small movement with such a big benefit. We often make the mistake of trying to do too much or go too far. This is enough and rise. I'm going to come up from the mat now and demonstrate this same pose for those of you who are seated in your chair. So to do that, I'm going to retrace my steps. So for those of you who are on the mat and when it's time to come up again at the end of our session today, I'm going to invite you to bend your knees and bring your feet to the left like so. Notice that I'm supporting myself with my right palm. I'm going to bring my left palm around next to my right palm and press through my palms until I can get to my knees. Then I'm going to walk my knees to the right. Notice how I'm retracing my journey. I'm going to walk my knees forward till I find my chair seat again. Let it support me. I'm going to bring my left foot closer to the chair, come up to my right toes, come up to stand, walk my right foot closer to the chair. I'm still bent over in my forward fold and now very slowly I'm going to rise. If you are seated in your chair, let us do our bent knee forward fold. Of course, when we sit down in our chair, our knees are already bent, so we're halfway there. I'm going to invite you to just bring your left foot a little bit forward and sitting nice and tall in our chair. It can be comfortable when you're sitting tall. And I'm now going to invite you to stack your palms one on top of the other on your left leg. And just as we did when I was seated on the mat, folding from your left hip crease, folding forward. This is the journey through your comfort zone. However far is comfortable for you, nice stretch. You probably feel it in the left part of your low back. And rise and bring your left foot next to your right foot. Let's bring our right foot ahead of our left foot and stacking your palms one on top of the other, gently folding forward from your right hip crease. Not too far. It's a nice feeling, isn't it? It's a wonderful thing. It does not have to hurt to do you good. It should feel good to do good. And rise. For those on the mat, whether you are seated in your chair or on your mat, we are coming to our final relaxation. So please get comfortable in your chair. If you are seated on the mat, I'm going to invite you to stretch your legs out in front of you. 
bring your feet close to the front of your mat so that you have plenty of room for your whole body. I want you to come down to your back and we'll ease our way down. So walking my palms back until my elbows find the mat, then I'm going to come down to my, ba my back. This is the time when you don't need to look at me and just hear my voice. I'm going to invite you to close your eyes, whether you are lying on your back or sitting in your chair, enjoying your breath. And we're going to do what is called an audible exhale in yoga. And I'm going to show you what it is. Listen to me. I'm going to breathe silently in through my nose. And when it's time for me to breathe out, I'm going to open my mouth and make the sound of ah. Here's what it sounds like. Let's do it together. Inhaling silently through your nose. <sighs> Breathing normally now. And go ahead and rest your hands on your belly, somewhere around your belly button. And as you breathe, enjoying the rise and fall of your belly. Just notice how your belly rises and falls as you breathe in and out. Enjoying complete relaxation for just a few seconds and then I will ring the bells. Beginning to wiggle your fingers and toes. Thinking about opening your eyes. If you are lying on your back, bending your knees, rolling to your right side, bringing your left arm across your body, bringing your left palm next to your right shoulder and Pressing yourself up to a seated position with your left arm. Let us touch our palms together at our breastbone. Thank you for joining me today for Third Age Yoga. The light in you shines in me. The light in me shines in you.